Flipping the script from last year, when it came time for choosing which specialized enduro model to punish in the red dirt and ledgy rocks of Southwest Utah, we opted for the mid-spec Enduro Elite 29. 4,820 bucks gets you big wheels, big travel, some well-suited suspension components, and a carbon front triangle. Two years in a row, we have a specialized Enduro. Last year was the 27.5, but I didn't think it got a fair shake. Yeah, even though it was the S-Works version, which you would think like, what could we possibly complain about? Lo and behold, we found something to complain about, which was the S-Works suspension. I mean, Olin's shocks are real techie and they're generally well thought of, but takes a lot of effort to get the setup right. So that's why we ended up spending at least twice as much time on that bike as any other, just yep. to figure it out. And even then, it wasn't ideal, and I felt like it had the potential. So brought this one in, and what'd you guys think? It, um, it's funny to kind of talk about a bike with this size wheels and this much travel, and it's got a 66 degree hand angle and calling that steep, but that's sort of where we're at. Yeah. Um, in spite of that, like my overwhelming impression of this bike was it's big. At the same time as it's really easy to get along with. And the wheelbase is only 1218, which is puny for a big travel 29er like this in today's zeitgeist. It puts it, what, about an inch and a half shorter in the wheelbase than the SB150, right? Yeah. Well, I think that's what made this bike so easy to get along with right off the bat. Like, it, it doesn't feel foreign. You don't have to change your riding style like you did the, the SP150 or the Mondrager Foxy 29. Like, it, it, it has a more conservative cockpit, but it has that big bike capability. That's part of what gives the bike that bigger feel than its numbers would suggest. And contrary to what a lot of people are also doing at the moment, where we're looking at this new wave of reduced offset forks, this one's still sitting around a 50 or 52 millimeter offset, right? So it, your steering input on it is really light. Again, it defies how big the bike is, but on those tighter bits of like chunky, not much flow that we were riding, especially the climby ups, it was really easy to manage this bike. I'm the smallest of the three of us on it, so I felt probably more aware of the just dimensions of the bike, but it was so easy to get along with. Like it was really easy to put the front wheel where you needed it to be, and then still it had all that travel and was really well composed. You could keep going faster and faster and faster. It didn't matter. And I spent some time with it in that speed first suspension setup where had the front end set up a little bit stiffer, had the damping set a little bit slower, so it just was more ground huggy and less playful, and it did that really, really well. Specialized long history of refining horse link four bar suspension has led to a versatile design, able to handle a wide variety of terrain and rider styles. With the Enduro, the Fox suspension can be tuned towards playful or plush, whatever floats your boat. So it has this more manageable geometry. What if I set it up to ride a little bit lighter? So. Uh, softened things a little bit, sped up the rebound, and it became this more put it where you want it kind of an everyday sort of a bike. Yeah, I noticed the same thing actually when I rode the Stump Jumper. It's a, these uh, FSR bikes are a little more versatile in terms of where you can set them for sag and compression and rebound, uh, and you can still get a good ride quality out of them with these different sort of tunes that you can achieve. Um, that said, on the climbs, if we're still comparing it to the SB150, I, I didn't think that the suspension on this was as settled as the SB150 was when you're out of the seat. Um, I, I mean, that bike is kind of remarkable in how quiet it is when you're putting power in from a standing position. And that is kind of an FSR thing, is yeah. with, with horse link bikes, you always do need to flip the lever, add some compression platform in there when you stand up, otherwise they do seem to bob, and this is no different in that yeah. regard. Yeah. But so, I still think it's the best horse link platform there is and Specialized have a database for developing that that's a couple decades in now. And it's, I, I'm impressed with how well it works. I liked that there was a, enough mid-stroke support in the shock that I wasn't clacking pedals like I was on some of the other bikes. It absorbed bumps really well seated and still gave you enough feedback that you could tell what was going on. I thought it was a really nice, firm but compliant, workable suspension. One thing that helped that seated climbing was the 76 and a half degree seat angle. Yeah. And that's like for a big brand like Specialized a year ago to come up with that. And that's what I think makes the Enduro 
really good all around, maybe even more so than some of the shorter travel big 29ers we have this year. I would, I would if it was going to come down to ease of riding and just familiarity, I, I'd put it up there like the Kona Process 153, which just seemed really simple and basic and well thought out. That's kind of how this comes across. It fits really well. It does everything with remarkable competence. Like, I think I mentioned like it climbs with dignity, if not alacrity. It's 32 and a half pound bike. It's not gonna rocket up a hill, but everything that's on it is all thought out, works well. It's got all these nice touches like the SWAT box. It's got really good tires. It comes with stock with the butcher grid. It, it's just a nice, cleanly executed bike at 4,850 bucks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and for people who are hesitant because they want one of these like big geo uh, sort of super modern bikes, I, I think they would be surprised by how aggressively you can ride this bike without the same learning curve that's required on uh, bikes like the SB150, where you really have to shift your weight forward for corners. Yeah, you can still death grip this thing at stupid fast speeds yeah. and it just, you know, it sucks that up without twitching. A solid value for money spec, nicely balanced suspension and geometry, and thorough attention to detail, the Enduro Elite 29 provides real world long travel performance and forgiving manners. To read the full review and see how the other contenders in our Bible of Bike test stacked up, head over to bikemag.com.